Hey garden friends, welcome to Flower Patch. I'm tr standing on treacherous icy snow right now. That's why I'm kind of maybe in a weird angle. But as you can see, we've got, we had gotten um, over a foot of snow, then it froze solid. And though it's been getting into the low 50s, sometimes even up to the mid 50s, uh, it's just not melting. I had hoped it would melt. I have tons of daffodils to get planted and I really didn't want to have to dig through the snow to get them planted. That's really kind of a bummer. So if it doesn't melt by next week, I'm going to be putting them in pots. So that's on my agenda soon. But in the meantime, I have an amaryllis I put in the basement to um, go do make it to go, go dormant after I had it out in the garden. I'll, all summer and I have a new bulb I want to get planted so let's go in the greenhouse and plant those up. So I went out to or I went to my basement and pulled out the amaryllis that I wanted to bring out of dormancy. So here it is this one was apple blossom and I got this one at tractor supply not last year but the year before it was in a bin and it had already started throwing out roots and or shoots and it was all crooked and it was on clearance so i just thought it was worth a shot um and i put it in my office in a bright window after i potted it up and it did gorgeous and then it rebloomed last year so this year i want to rebloom again i had it outdoors all summer like i mentioned before and I kept it in the pot um, and it did great. It kept all its foliage. It didn't bloom again, but I didn't expect it to. So now um, I was reading up on it because I'm no expert in this. I'll tell you that right off the bat, but that you should repot it in fresh potting soil. Now the first year I didn't, I just had it in my office and um, it threw up more, more leaves um, in the fall and then come winter, it bloomed. So, but thought this year I would give it, make sure it had plenty of nutritious soil. Now this summer it threw up a bunch of side. I don't know if it put out more bulbs. I don't know. I hadn't read anything about that. So I have my potting soil here. Is This is um, Edna's Best by E.B. Stone. It's an organic potting soil. And I have another pot like this one. Um, here now do I have some yes I do have some I put these little mesh things or coffee filters in the bottom to um, keep the soil in them and not and so they don't get blocked for drainage and stuff and sometimes you can put a little piece of crock in there too so here goes our test we are going to take this out of the container I don't care if the gravel gets down in here it's fairly dry now let's see what we got. I gotta put my glasses on here. Let me see if I can you see? Yeah, you can see pretty much. All right. Okay, here's the little piece of mesh. Some little this is the piece of mesh. I will put that back in the bottom of the pot. And then I'll just kind of work the soil away from the bulb. The bulb look feels a little shriveled but look at all these little bulbettes is that what you call them i don't know but um i wonder i probably should look up what i need to do if i need to <coughs> excuse me sucked up some soil in my throat if i'm supposed to take those off and plant them alone this one's shooting up new leaves so even though this bulb feels a little squishy <coughs> I gotta go get a drink now. Um, I'm gonna look that up and then I'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay, so we found out what we needed to do with these little bulbets so that we don't destroy them and they can grow on. And basically you just pull them away gently from the mother plant, making sure you leave a few of the roots, which that one's got plenty of roots, attached. And then you pot them up into their own pots. And it said, um, two inches. Yeah, that's about two inches around. So this size pot will probably work good. This has the rounded lip like I like the original one. And I had gotten this one out just in case that one wasn't big enough. But 
This, I don't need this big one. So back over onto the shelf it goes. Anyway, so now, even though these little bull bats look like they're a good size, um, it does look like my parent bulb has really shriveled up. So I don't know if that was from because it got the soil got so dried out or what, but I'm still going to pot this back up and and see what happens. So now I had tons of success and no issues with overwatering, but I did put a layer, probably this much of a layer of perlite in the very bottom. Now what that does is it will hold the soil above it above the uh, line of the perlite and perlite will hold oxygen. So it does help in preventing root rot um, in, to a degree. So let me see, where am I? Okay, I've got some right here. And I don't, yeah, here's a, some little of those mesh bags. These are little tiny grow bags that you were supposed to be able to grow things in, I, uh, seedlings in, I never was successful with that. So um, I keep them and I put them in the bottom of pots. So um, the, instead of a little crock or something, and that prevents the soil from falling through while letting moisture water go through. So I'm just gonna put in a small layer of perlite. Perlite's in there before I put some soil. Now you only want to bury the bulb. Uh, you want a third of the top showing. So that has a lot of roots and I put it down in there and trust me if you can't see I am going to leave at the top of the bulb showing while getting all the roots down in there sufficiently. So here's a little bit of the stem. And then I will set this aside and take it in and put it in a bright spot so it can continue to grow. I doubt I will get blooms this year from that. But um, in subsequent years, I should get some. Did I put out another? No, I didn't put out another little pot. So here's another one of those little pots and another little mesh bag and I'll pick up some of this perlite hold it away from me because I don't I didn't dampen it which keeps the dust out if you dampen the perlite and then I'm going to pull away another little bulbette so I'm just gently going to work it away and take with it some little roots now this time instead of setting roots on top of soil I think I'm going to do it this way I set it in the pot I'm holding it by the neck and then I'm just going to fill soil in around it. Try to let it go, but that's okay. Pull it up. So that way the roots are further down instead of being sitting on top of some of the soil. So there we go. There's that one. And I firm it down in there just a touch. Okay, I'm going to set aside the bulb bed so you're not bored watching me pull these all off. Now, little tiny ones, this um, can stay on there until they get bigger. Yeah, it's pretty solid inside this. I wasn't worried about it. Yeah, those are super tiny, so I'm going to leave those attached. They're not near as big as this one. So this has the mesh bag in there. I'm going to get a little bit of perlite to pour down in the bottom. And I would say it's probably half an inch. The rest can go into the soil here and just, it just gives it better drainage. There's a little bit of the gravel in here from the top of the pot, that's fine too. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna hold it where I think the top is gonna show. And I don't want that to break down. I'm just gonna fill in. I love this scooper. This scooper I caught in the barbecue department. I guess they scoop um, 
pellets for like uh, pellet barbecues. And, um, but it's perfect for scooping up soil to put in two pots around your plants that you're trying to get in the ground. Okay, being that's pretty shriveled up, it's iffy whether that's gonna bloom, but I, the bulbets will grow on. So now I'm gonna pot up this one was $6.98, I got it at Lowe's. And this was a red one. I had such great success with um, that apple blossom, which I got on the cheap, that I thought I couldn't lose by buying another inexpensive one. You can buy probably um, bigger sized or better quality bulbs through like Longfield Gardens or some places like that. Excuse, I'm going to tear this so I'm going to be loud on my microphone. So, oh, see, they trimmed the roots off. I didn't know how. I guess I could have trimmed the roots off, but I didn't bother. So this is a really solid bulb. And I'm going to do the same. It's already peeking out a little blossom. Not blossom, but leaf. Little perlite in the bottom. Already have the little mesh bag in there. Yes, I know. I should have... Uh, Moistened it so I didn't get the dust free. And I can fill it because I don't have long roots to worry about until I'll, I have it at the level I want it. Now, what I love about terracotta pots for amaryllis is they're nice and heavy because they can get top heavy when they bloom. And then you don't have to worry, oh, that's perfect depth, about it toppling. So I got these at the, our local garden center. These are from Italy. I like the rolled edge on these and they weren't expensive. I know there's some fancier, you know, name brand ones that are pretty pricey, but I, I garden on a budget. So, um, I love just the plain rolled edges. It works for me. So I'm going to tamp that down a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and do like I did before and I'll put a little gravel on top and that just makes it pretty and um, increases drainage. I don't know if it increases drainage. I just know it makes it pretty. So, okay, I have the big gravel, but then also I bought this little gravel. It's from Lowe's, but it's called Kalahari River Rocks. Um, so I think I'll use that. It's just a real pretty gravel and small in size. I'll do these. Just enough to cover the soil and around this one. Okay, now I'm going to go put these in a bright spot like I said in my house and we will come back later and I will show you the results. But that's how I plant up my amaryllis and how I pot up the little tiny bulbets.